there, this is Oliver from Lentos.com and in this tutorial uh, we'll cover the second part of the materials light and rendering tutorial. So let's go to Blender and I have a, a little scene with a monkey mesh, a plane and well the start camera and light. Right? We're going to see what happens if we have no camera and no light. Uh, with no camera you cannot render. Okay, but well, let's try. So, I told you, no camera. So we need to create a camera. Normally, you use the the one you have at the start of the of the project, but well, in this case, I'm showing you how to create a new one, which is no no mystery at all. Uh, okay, something wait. something like this should be cool alright uh, and now if we have no light in the render everything will appear on black as you can see it's everything black so let's create a new light lamp and here you have several types of lamps okay the normal one is the point lamp okay, let's place it something like here Right, and now we are going to take a look at the light parameters. Okay, so you are here. Uh, let's see what happens uh, when we render. Okay, you have the light, you have no shadows. We're going to see how to tweak them right now. You have the point lamp, which is the normal light, uh, just a point that emits light everywhere, okay, in, in every direction. The sun is a directional light. Okay, so every every uh, point of the scene will be uh, illuminated from the same direction. Okay. The spot is just like the point light, so but uh, it has a limited angle of illumination. Okay, you can configure the here you have a preview. Okay, you can configure uh, the the smoothness of the border. Okay, with all these options here. Well, you can take a look at them uh, your own. Okay, uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to work just with a point and an hemispherical light. Hemispherical light is just uh, a light that emits uh, light in one direction, like the sun, more or less, but it has no shadows. So it's used uh, normally for uh, filling up a bit uh, dark areas in the scene. Okay, and then we have the aerial lights, the aerial lights, which are, uh, which is a uh, some kind of rectangle or or square that emits light. But well, let's go with the point light. Uh, as we saw uh, before, it has no shadows at all. So let's activate shadows here. Ray shadows. Okay, let's take a look now. Okay, we have shadows now. Let's uh, position it a bit. One thing to notice here, well, <laughs> I didn't explain you how to render an image. Uh, for rendering, you have to press the key F12, okay? Or here, you have the render panel. Uh, just press image and you will render uh, a, a frame of the animation, the, the recent frame, the current frame. Okay, here you will render an animation. Well, let's, uh, let's take a look at the options of the rendering. Here you have uh, render layers. Uh, in, this, in this button, uh, you can tell Blender where you want to make a render. Okay, some of you may find it useful to render the image on a new window. Okay, because this way you will have the render on a different window from that that is not Blender. Okay, I actually prefer to use an image editor, which is going to take the the bigger uh, viewport you have in the scene, uh, in the in the UI, and it's going to take it as a render. Okay, just press ESC and you will be again on the 3D viewport or whatever. Or you can do it full screen, which is going to take all the Blender UI and uh, change it to a 
to a render image. Okay, press ESC again, and we're going to see it on a image editor. Right here, you have the di dimensions of the of the of the render. Okay, in this case, it's full HD, but it's rendered at the half half the size. Okay, here you have the frame range from one to okay, uh, the frames per second, the aspect radio. This is if you want to render just a part of the scene. It's quite useful because you can uh, with Control B. I think it's no shift B shift B you can render just this part so quite useful for uh, checking little parts of the render if they work and all that stuff uh, just deactivate right now the anti-aliasing uh, some shading uh, options here if you want for example to make uh, a quick render to test the light you probably don't need to render the textures so the render is faster, or the shadows, uh, whatever. Okay, this tells Blender if the where there there is no mesh at all, and you can see the background of the of the scene. Uh, if you want to uh, render the sky, or if you want to render uh, a transparent background. Okay, this is n normal, the normal uh, um, option I use in my renders. Okay, because that way at post-production we can add another image on the background. Uh, okay, here you uh, tell Blender where to save the the frames on an animation. Okay, so just click here and you can uh, tell Blender where to save them. But if you render just one frame, you won't need to do it. Okay, because uh, Blender does not store uh, at all. It's not safe just one frame render you have to uh, render it uh, save it manually okay so uh, here you tell blender well uh, what uh, format you want to use for the image and the channels you want okay this is PNG RGBA are quite uh, good okay and here you have some more options like the threads you want to use of, for of, of your computer post-processing you want to use compositing or the sequencer stamp if you want to add the time or uh, statistics of the render on the image and this is the bake which is uh, another thing that lets you render uh, actual shadows or things the, on the scene but on a, a texture that uh, is part of a model okay so you project all the shadows and all the render stuff on a uh, texture it's pretty handy okay so once we know how to make a render uh, let's tweak the light so let's have a look again okay we have uh, the monkey we have a very black area and we have uh, a very hard shadow so let's make the shadow softer uh, here you have the soft size. You can see that it's activated, but the samples is just one, so it renders very hard. If you want to uh, to see it soft, you need to uh, increase the samples. Let's take a look. Okay, here you have it softer, but uh, you can see that is uh, the quality is not very good. Okay, this is because uh, we need more samples. With ten, it should be enough. Yes, it's pretty good, and you can increase uh, it uh, even much more. But you you will get uh, a lot more of quality, but it, the render will take a lot of time. As you can see, is very slow right now. So in this case, we are going to use about seven or eight samples. So you can see how it works. And here you can increase the, the soft size, so now they will be even softer. But again, uh, to see it better, you will need to increase even more the samples. Okay. Uh, well, 
here you can change the color of the light let's put it something warm and here the energy which is the well just that the energy of the light you can see here on the preview so now it's very bright okay let's put it smoother okay something like this is pretty cool alright this is the distance uh, if you activate it here you can see the light uh, if you activate it and put it for example uh, let me decrease the, the distance activate the sphere and at this point you should see okay here you see the limits of the light so from here to here is going to be decreasing the intensity okay so it's some kind of gradient if we render right now you will see that here the light has uh, a little influence already okay so just increase it a bit more so now here it has some force but here is uh, the light doesn't exist at all let's increase it even more this something like this is pretty cool also in order to render uh, quickly the previews you can do uh, decrease the, the, the percentage of the original size to render so here you, you will you will get uh, a smaller render but the render will be pretty quick alright now as you can see we have this bright area but the face of the monkey is completely black so let's position the camera right here because I have the option activated of creating objects uh, aligned with the view so let's create a lamp and an emu lamp to just make a, a fill light that illuminates a bit the face of the monkey let's take a look well this is <laughs> this is a lot uh, okay note that uh, whatever you have the view positioned the render will be always from the uh, active camera okay if you have more cameras let's see what happens you have this another d camera but uh, the active camera will still be the the original one uh, you can know uh, wh which one is the the active camera because in this triangle is solid okay as you can see this is uh, on wireframe mode this is solid you can make a camera active just uh, well you can s switch to the camera view with zero on the numpad okay and you can make another camera uh, active by pressing Control zero so here you have an active camera I think there is also another I don't know where it is I think there is an option camera camera one okay here you can switch also the the camera which is the active camera Okay, as you can see the triangles switch okay so let's delete this one and what else oh yeah let's decrease uh, the intensity of this light to something like dot one let's see what happens okay we are starting to see the, the monkey face but it is still a uh, very a lot of energy so 0.05 and let's make this uh, a little cold something blue okay even 3 well, I, I don't like it at all <laughs> but well you can see uh, how it works 
something like this should be should be enough. But what happens if we press uh, the point on the on the keyboard? So we switch the pivot point to the to the three D cursor and switch the lights like this. All right. This is a different thing. <laughs> now let's increase a bit this intensity. Okay, but like this. All right, this is cooler than the the other option. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to show you uh, a different uh, kind of illumination which is new in Blender uh, 2.5, and I find it uh, very handy. Okay, so let's take the lights and switch them to another layer so we have not them here. As you can see, it's black. Okay, so let's go to the world panel and here you can change the horizon color. Okay, but uh, for now I'm going to put it in white and uh, activate environment lighting put it to sky color and let's see what happens okay so as you can see the light uh, comes from everywhere so we get uh, a very soft shadows uh, as, as with the normal lights we can see that we have here uh, just five samples so the quality is not very good but we can increase it in order to get better results here you have them also we can uh, activate uh, ambient occlusion so we will get on the on the cavities uh, some shadows and that stuff but it's better to have it uh, to have it on multiply mode so here you can see let's now uh, change the sky color so we did something like this uh, orange I like orange. <laughs> and there we go. If we now, uh, as this one just delete it, show the light, we are uh, mixing the environment lighting with uh, with normal light. So the environment lighting gives a feel light that is very uh, very cool. I like it a lot. But as we now have a normal illumination on the scene, maybe it's better to decrease this just a bit. Increase the samples to 15. And let's see what happens. OK, I like it. But just make the environment lighting cold. Just to see what happens. Okay, here we go. Let's make a final uh, full HD render. <laughs> well, it's pretty slow. So, uh, you know how to use lights. You know how to configure them. Well, just the basics, but uh, you understand them. And you know how to use the environment light uh, the ambient occlusion, okay, you can change the samples and some options here, but well, I recommend you to test that uh, your own, so you can see what happens uh, when you change something uh, on the parameters. And the indirect lighting, uh, well, in the in the trunk branch, uh, I mean the trunk is not a branch, in the trunk of Blender, you will not have uh, actual indirect lighting just approximate okay so well it doesn't uh, project shadows and all that stuff uh, so well you can check the render branch so there you will have actual indirect lighting but well uh, I think uh, when they uh, merge the branch the render branch into the trunk uh, I will make a tutorial on indirect lighting okay so here we have the full HD render okay, it's very very cool. <laughs> and well, that's all. See you soon and happy blending.